everyone. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Texas Insider TV, brought to you by Speedstream. Congressman from the 21st Congressional District, former Bear County Commissioner, and Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, we're going to talk today with Congressman Lamar Smith about a lame duck session and sequestration cuts affecting Texas. Thank you for joining us, Congressman. Happy to be here. You have been with us numerous times talking about border security and fast and furious and your, your role as Judiciary Committee, but today we're going to delve into something different because as the election's approaching, a lot of folks are hearing about sequestration, fiscal cliff, and the possibility of a lame duck session. Tell us what a lame duck that session is, is, and are you really going to have one? I, we are going to have a lame duck session. Lame duck session occurs after the election, uh, supposedly when all elected officials are lame ducks because they're getting ready to uh, uh, go out of office or be elected to another office and start their new term in January. So it's the end of everybody's term. Uh, most years, Jim, in fact, uh, all the years for the last number of Congresses, we have not had a lame duck session. Uh, our leaders have threatened us and said, if you don't get your job done, we're going to have a lame duck session. That means we get our job done and we don't have to come back in before Thanksgiving or before Christmas. Uh, this year, they've already announced that we are going to be back in session for two weeks in November and two weeks in December. That's how much unfinished business there is. You mentioned uh, sequestration, for example. Uh, sequestration is a name for automatic cuts in both our defense and our non-defense components of our budget. It was part of, if I may, yeah. part of the budget agreement that you've talked about before about nine months ago. Right. Last, uh, last year we had a budget agreement and the agreement was if Congress did not succeed in making certain spending cuts then these automatic cuts would take place. Uh, there was no agreement on the spending cuts, so these automatic cuts are now looming and will take place this January if we don't do anything about them. Defense is going to be cut by about 10 percent, non-defense by about 8 percent. To put that in perspective, okay. uh, that will take defense down to a level that was before World War II. And that is why you've got everybody from Secretary of Defense on up and down saying we can't afford to have sequestration. So there'll be a lot of pressure during the lame duck session for us to come up with alternative spending cuts. So the trade-off back when the, this agreement was passed was liberals wanted significant cuts in areas like defense. Correct. You all were asking for spending reductions and, and tax cuts in other areas to boost the economy. That's essentially what's led to this, That's correct? That's ex exactly right. What we're really concerned about and what sort of uh, caused all this to occur mm -hmm. is the deficit spending that our country has been engaged in for the last three years. Um, frankly, the president promised when he was campaigning for the presidency he was going to cut the deficit in half, and we've now seen it double. Uh, every year for three years, and the projection is for a fourth year next year, that the deficit is going to seed $1 trillion. We're spending that much more than we actually have. And we're finally starting to hear some of this on the campaign trail. Exactly, uh, uh, particularly by uh, Mitt Romney, yes. of course. But the government is now borrowing 40 cents on every dollar it spends. 40 cents on every dollar it spends. That's the road to insolvency. Everybody knows we can't continue to go that direction, and so that's what this lame duck session is supposed to be about, solving some of those problems. Now, Congressman, you've been involved as chairman of the Judiciary Committee, but also a House leader in previous efforts to get a balanced budget amendment passed. Um, there may have even been something in the last year that, toward that end, but talk about the, yeah. the possibility. Is that just never going to happen? I know the Senate's not even passed a budget in a couple of years. That, that is true. Um, the Judiciary Committee that I chair has jurisdiction over the Constitution and therefore any constitutional amendments come out of the Judiciary Committee and we considered two amendments this year to balance the uh, budget, uh, constitutional amendments to balance the budget. They both passed the House floor but not with the two-thirds of the votes necessary for a constitutional amendment but at least most of the people in the House sent the signal that we believe in a balanced budget. And you're right, uh, the Senate has not passed a budget in three years despite a 1974 law called the Budget Control Act that requires both the House and the Senate to pass budgets. The House actually passed two budgets this year. The Senate uh, brought up the President's budget not a single senator, Republican or Democrat, voted for the president's budget, but they passed no budget themselves, completely contrary to the law. I uh, don't know how they get away with it, but uh, we have to get our economic house in order. And it's a little indication probably of some of the, the weakness that the 
Obama administration may or may not be seen within its own ranks. Uh, but specifically, if I may, and real quick, because I want to move on to science and technology in a second, uh, real quickly, you're from the San Antonio area. There's a, a large military presence, but just generally mm -hmm. in Texas, about this sequestration, should we mm -hmm. expect it does have an impact on economic activity, or there, is there any way to predict oh, at this um, point? If sequestration goes into effect, Texas will be hit harder than most states just because of the presence of so many, many military installations here okay. in our state. Uh, all I can say is we hope it's not going to occur. Uh, I don't think it's going to occur, and that's going to be determined by uh, what happens in November or December of this year. So you'll, you and your, your fellow congressmen, co colleagues, will be up there before Thanksgiving, before Christmas. Correct. We'll have you back during that time. Uh, on another subject, if I can real quickly, and again, folks, we're visiting with Congressman Lamar Smith from the 21st Congressional District in San Antonio currently chairman of the Judiciary Committee, but you're also a long-serving member of the Science and Tech com Committee, and there was just in the last week or so private sector uh, launching of, yes. of a rocket, mm -hmm. SpaceX, up into space. What are you hearing on, on the NASA front? It's an yeah. important thing for Texas. Any developments there? Well, the Science, Space, and Technology Committee does have jurisdiction over NASA, over our space policy. And uh, the commercialization of space, Jim, I think is the most recent and positive and welcome development. And uh, we have SpaceX, one of a number of commercial enterprises. Uh, SpaceX has already made a couple of successful launches to reprovision the uh, space shuttle, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, the International Space Station, space going station. Around 230 miles up. Uh, very successfully. So they're sort of leading the way, and I think that is going to be the future uh, where the government is going to look to the private sector, particularly to do some sort of basic type shuttle kinds of launches. And uh, we'll see more of that in the future. But I'd like to get our NASA program, our space program, uh, back to where it has been in past years, and that is where we actually talk about exploring uh, space. Uh, this administration uh, has uh, seen fit to try to convert at least part of what NASA's missions are to almost an environmental uh, mission and Earth sciences. I think the point of space is to get away from Earth, not to uh, try to convert NASA into an environmental organization. So I'm hoping that in the future we'll remember what we need to do, and that is explore space. Uh, right now it's the next frontier. It may not be the final frontier, but it's certainly the next frontier. Or how about even, because I know there's a lot of retired astronauts that live in Texas, there's been angst among the, the professional community there, but you, prior to one of your last visits, were over at an elementary school. I believe talking to astronauts on the on the space station. Yeah. What about even just for leadership as a nation and invigorating our economy yeah. to aspire to greater things? Oh, I think uh, space and NASA does all that. It's inspirational. Um, we don't we don't go to into space for the spinoffs, but just to list mm -hmm. some of the spinoffs, we have flat screen TV, we have laser surgery, we have sophisticated GPS. Um, uh, we have uh, better weather forecasting and all the rest that come uh, out of spinoffs from space. But space is there to be explored. Every country that has survived and, and prospered have always pushed their boundaries, have always uh, tried to go beyond where they are today, mm -hmm. and, and the U.S. needs to do that as well. Well, Congressman, we're going to leave it there and be respectful of your time. Speaking of leadership, let you get on the road. Folks, thanks for joining us for today's edition with Congressman Lamar Smith, Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Congressional District 21. Remember, you're either an insider or you're not. I'm Jim Cardle. Thanks for joining us.